back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Scott, for one minute. Well, thank you, Chairman Lynch. And let me just echo everything that's been said. We have this new, wonderful, and exciting world of technology, but we got to do better and put it to use to be able to sustain our American consumers. As you recall, in the 2008 uh, dilemma that we had, our crisis, it took uh, an extraordinarily long time to get, even get the help down to our constituents. This time we did move quicker uh, with this pandemic, but not quick enough. So I just hope that, uh, and I look forward to our great, great committee of, uh, of uh, participants who will be providing information and in terms of how we can really take this exciting technology and bring it home and deliver better uh, reception to our American people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentleman. The gentleman yields. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Scott, for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. You know, as I'm listening to this, uh, exciting and exuberant uh, conversation. I'm concerned about our inability so far to be able to address what I think is a very pressing issue. And that is the lack of financial education, particularly of our younger and new generation. Um, when I listen to the uh, information that our panelists are, are passing out, I'm aware of how rapidly we are moving to a cashless society without cash. And, and, and doing this without any regard to how do we bring our American people along with us? How do we bring our younger generation? Did you all know, for example, that out of 50 states in our nation, only 17 of our state school system even offer one course in financial education or financial literacy? And then with this technology coming in, as wonderful an asset as it is, it's making our financial system even far more complicated. And as you move from a cashless society, there are certain segments of our population that are not even um, on board the train. 60 5% of African Americans con conduct their financial transactions in cash. When you put that together with only 17 of our state school systems even offer one course in financial education, we need to begin to draw our attention to it and make sure we're bringing our full nation along with us as we move in what is warp speed with this technology. Uh, having said that, let me uh, start with you, Ms. Kelly. Um, with the 2008 crisis that came along, it took 10 weeks to get the stimulus checks out. Um, with this crisis, it takes two weeks. Now that's a real good improvement. What do you attribute that improvement to? So uh, it's, uh, it's definitely true that as we move forward in time, our ability 
uh, to push money out has, has improved with it. Um, and we're moving more quickly this time uh, than we did in the last instance that you referenced. Um, uh, but, I, but, but I would also say, as others have said, it's equally true that it's not quickly, that we're not moving quickly enough and that there's more that needs to be done. Um, and, and there are you know, different things that we are doing this time, like increasing use of prepaid and increasing use of digital tools, including P2P, that have helped with that, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and that can help more if we, if we rely on and then more, if we rely on them further and really kind of leverage what we are doing well now to do better. Good. Um, let me move to another area that I've been working on, and that is frauds and scams as, as we move along, particularly with the stimulus check and using the thieves, the scammers out there are using our advances in technology to create even more creative ways of doing the, the scams. And I sort of would like to ask you, and uh, Mr. Giancana, um, if you're there, I know that you were former chairman of the CFTC, wonderful, worked with you uh, over in uh, my committee, CEEC on several of those issues. And I know the CFTC has been very interested in this, but um, how can, what are y'all's thoughts on how we can get greater safety and a concern with the different uh, techniques of scams that are out there? And if you can- The gentleman's time has expired, but we'll, we'll allow Mr. Giancarlo to answer the question. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I don't see myself on the screen, so I hope you can see me. But, uh, you know, when I was at the commission with your great support, you know, we really had a very strong enforcement program because as the technology moves on, the fraudsters and the scammers move along with it. And it's critically important that regulatory agencies that have enforcement uh, efforts and have enforcement powers stay ahead of the technology so they can stay ahead of the next generation of fraudsters and scammers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the gentleman, Mr. Scott. Uh, 